All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to find what the maximum permissible torque is for a shaft of known dimensions. So we have D2 and D1. The outer diameter is 60 millimeters. The inner diameter is 40 millimeters. And we know that its allowable shear force is 80, or shear stress, sorry, is 85 megapascals. And uh, we know that we can't exceed that and that that's going to be happening on this surface uh, of the shaft here, basically at a distance of C2 out from the axis of the shaft. So in order to solve this problem, first we're going to need to solve, uh, we're going to need to figure out what our polar moment of inertia is. So we have J, uh, and that will be equal to pi over 2 times C2 to the power of 4 minus C1 to the power of 4. So if we go and plug in some values to that, we get pi over 2. And uh, C2 here is 30 millimeters, but we want this in meters. So we'll go 0 0.03 meters. That's all to the power of 4 minus C1, which is 20 millimeters. So 0 0.02 meters all to the 4. And uh, when we crunch that, we're going to get that is 1.021 times 10 to the minus 6 meters 4. All right, now we're going to use the exact same equation that we've been using before. So we have our shear, uh, shear stress is equal to T times C over J. Now in this case, we are because we're saying that the maximum allowable shear is 85 megapascals, that's what we're going to plug in here. And uh, because we're talking about maximums of what we're allowing, that's why we're using C here. And in this case, C is the outer diameter, so that's C2. All right, but what we would really want to know is the only unknown that we have is our, uh, is our torque. So we're going to rearrange for T here. So we'll get uh, this will be equal to T will be equal to our shearing stress uh, times that polar moment of inertia all over C. All right, so if we go and plug in some numbers for this, maybe let's let's bring it down here. So we have T was okay. equal to shearing stress J over C. Um, so when we plug this in, we're going to put in our shearing stress, that allowable one, that's 85 megapascals. And we're going to multiply this by our J, which is 1.021 times 10 to the negative 6 meters for and then bring this all over a value of 0 0.03 meters. All right, now we're gonna play with the units here a little bit. So we're gonna convert 85 megapascals into, uh, that's 85 times 10 to the six pascals, but pascals are also newtons per meter squared. So we'll just do ourselves a favor and write it like that right away. Uh, we'll bring in this same unit here, so 1.021 times 10 to the minus 6 meters for, and then again, we're, we're not really tampering with anything here on the bottom, but this will just stay as 0 0.03 meters. But what we can do now is we can start canceling out units. So we got meters squared here. We'll cancel that out, and that'll leave us with meters squared here. And then we also got a meter down here, so we're going to bring that, and that'll reduce this down to a, a single unit of meters. So what we're left over with is uh, we have, oh, and also we have this, uh, this 10 to the 6 here, and 10 to the minus 6. That's going to cancel out too. So we are just left with 85 times 1.021. This is over 0 0.03, and this is in units of Newton meters. All right, so when we just do that, we crunch that number, uh, we're going to see that we get a value for T here. This is uh, 2,893 Newton meters, uh, but it might make more sense to write this in kilonewton meters, so we'll just get uh, 2.89 kilonewton meters, and that is the maximum, the maximum permissible torque for this shaft so that we don't exceed our allowable shear stress.